Are Christians required to keep God's commandments, whether from the Old or the New Testament? Are God's commandments of any relevance to Christians today who are saved by grace through faith in Jesus? Do they even matter anymore? Perhaps the most famous biblical commandments are the Ten Commandments, which tell us to make God our only God and not to take his name in vain. They insist that we honor our parents and refrain from murder, adultery, stealing, among other things. Should we try very diligently to keep those commands? What happens if we make no effort to keep them and break them daily or regularly? But of course, there are New Testament commands as well. Jesus tells us we should love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and we should love our neighbor as ourselves. Are those commandments binding on us today? But Jesus gives us a great deal of other commands. These would include the command to forgive those who trespass against you, to pray secretly and not make a show of your praying. He tells us to seek first the kingdom of God, to lay up treasures in heaven, and to forgive our enemies, to name just a few. Do these things mean anything to us? Can we become a Christian and totally ignore his commands? After all, he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Is it possible to be saved and yet not love Jesus and not keep his commandments? And then there are the commands of Paul and the other apostles. In the epistles of Paul, we are told all sorts of things we must do and things we must never do. These would include husbands, love your wives. Wives, submit to your husbands. Children, obey your parents. Bear with one another in love. Put away lying. Let him who steals, steal no more. Do not be drunk with wine. Flee sexual immorality. Paul, the apostle of grace, had very definite ideas of how Christians should live, and he preached a very strict code of conduct for believers. Were these exhortations or commands by Paul Guidelines? Were they suggestions? Or were they real commands that we are supposed to keep? Now, every evangelical Christian agrees we're not saved by keeping any commandments other than the command to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. If someone came to me and asked how to become a child of God, I would not tell him to be good and keep all God's rules and he would surely go to heaven. I would, as all evangelicals would, tell him to receive Jesus Christ by faith. John says, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. And Paul declares, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. But does this mean we do not have to worry about keeping God's commands? Are we free to ignore all these laws and commands and exhortations of the Bible and just go ahead and steal, kill, and commit adultery freely and joyfully. Most Christians instinctively know that as God's children, we are expected and required to keep the commands of God. It is true that many of the Old Testament commands of Moses given to the Jews have been negated. When Jesus' disciples were criticized by the religious leaders for eating without first ceremonially cleansing their hands, Jesus declared, There is nothing that enters a man from outside which can defile him, but the things which come out of him, those are the things that defile a man. And the Bible says that he thus purified all food. So with one statement, Jesus canceled the many detailed dietary laws of Moses. Paul declared that through his death on the cross, Jesus wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. For this reason, Christians feel free to eat ham sandwiches, to wear shirts with cotton and polyester blends, and they feel no necessity to offer animal sacrifices. But why did God give us all these New Testament commands? Can we safely ignore them? There are several points all Christians can agree on. First, we're not saved. We're not born again through any attempt to keep God's commands. Jesus says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The Bible formula for eternal life is pretty simple. We believe in Jesus Christ. We live forever. 
Another point we can all agree on is that we're not under the law. Paul writes, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you're not under the law, but under grace. God's laws and commands are not our master. Jesus is our master and grace is the realm in which we live once we've trusted in him. But these two points do not mean that we're completely free to disregard God's commands, particularly the ones we find in the New Testament. And we find a great many commands in the New Testament. At the heart of the matter is this, when we're saved through Jesus Christ, we join the family of God. And in this family are a great number of rules of behavior. This is how the family is supposed to act. Morality still counts. In fact, it counts so much that when we're born again, the moral codes and commands of God are imprinted on our hearts. The prophet Jeremiah, foreseeing this new covenant, wrote, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds I will write them. And when we have the commands of God written in our hearts, we find ourselves eager to please God and do His will. Paul writes, For it is God who works in you, both to will and to do, for His good pleasure. This is such an integral aspect of the new birth, that if you don't experience this, if you claim to be a Christian, but you have no desire to please God or keep His commands, your faith is not real faith at all. John writes, He who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Keeping the commands of God found in the New Testament, in the words of Jesus and Paul and Peter and John and others, is evidence that you are indeed saved, and it indicates that when you say, I know Jesus, you're not telling a lie. It demonstrates that God has written his laws in your heart and has supernaturally created in you the desire to please him and keep his commands, of which the essence is this, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. On my Bible channel, we're now offering audio podcasts of the Bible studies Ben and I have in the mornings. An audio podcast means there's no video to watch, and that means you can listen to it while you're doing other things. If you're out and about, you can play it through your car stereo while driving. You can listen through earphones while you walk or exercise at the gym. And if you're at home and going to be in the same room for a while, you can simply put your phone on speaker, or you could buy an inexpensive Bluetooth radio and pair it with your phone, or do the same thing with a Bluetooth speaker. So welcome to our home as you drop in on Ben and me as we study the Bible together.